Beginning here, we are going to work to factor each expression. Now, of course, as a reminder, to factor an expression or a number means that we're writing the expression or number as a product of its factors. So with this 2x squared plus 9x plus 7 expression, and with any factoring that we want to do, our first step should always be to factor out a greatest common factor of all of the terms first of all. Now with this example here and then also some of these other earlier examples, we're not going to have to concern ourselves with that, at least yet. And we can double check that at least with this one right here because 2, 9, and 7, um, they're only divisible by 1 as the greatest common factor and then x squared x and then there's no x. So clearly there is no um, common factor other than a one of the terms. So we don't need to worry about factoring out a GCF with this one. So if we're going to try to factor 2x squared plus 9x plus 7, then we want to at least have something times something and then maybe times something else. And like you can have as many factors as you want, right? But at least you need to have at least two factors here. And we might try to do this similar to what we've done before, right? Because you think, okay, well, like, you know, we can do x times x, but but x times x equals x squared, right? Or 1x squared. And if we want to create an expression that's still equivalent to 2x squared plus 9x plus 7, you can't do 1x times 1x, right? So as we're factoring, we're going to restrict ourselves only to using just whole numbers, just integers. So that makes it a little bit easier for us. We don't have to use decimals or anything. Um, so what we could maybe explore is doing 2x, right, and then times 1x, because that does equal 2x squared. So if we explore that possibility then, then let's maybe make that be a 2x, and then the other thing in parentheses has just a 1x. And then if we think about, you know, some foiling that has to happen to make this equal to 2x squared plus 9x plus 7, um, everything's positive, so we definitely want a plus and a plus. So isn't it going to be true that whatever number is here, that when it multiplies with that number right there, that's the only part of the foiling that's actually just going to give you only a number, right? Like no variable involved. So it means that those two things have to multiply and equal just that number of 7 right there, right? So we'll have to think about what possibilities will give us that. But then in terms of this part of the foil right here and this part of the foil right there, right? That's going to create some x terms that will combine together to equal the 9x. So we'll have to kind of creatively think about how we're going to go about this. So the easiest thing to think about here is as we're just kind of guessing and checking how this factoring works, okay, we're going to want to go to that 7 and think about the numbers that can multiply to equal 7. And really our only choices using just whole numbers are going to be a 1 and a 7, of course, right? So um, it is going to matter now where these numbers are going to go because, for example, if I put the plus 7 right here and then the plus 1 right there, it turns out that that factored expression right there is not, is not equal to the expression above it because if you did foil this out right here, you're going to get 2x squared and then plus 14x plus 1x means you get plus 15x and then plus 7 and clearly that's not equal to the expression above it. Um, so if you do, instead of having 2x plus 1 and x plus 7, maybe you have 2x plus 7 and x plus 1, you can check um, if that foils out to still equal 2x squared plus 9x plus 7. And what you'll get is you'll get 2x squared and then 2x plus 7x is plus 9x and 7 times 1 is plus 7. And that is equal to uh, what we see above it. So it does turn out then, just kind of erasing some of this work, that this expression right here is just a factored form of the expression that's above it. Um, and so that accomplishes what our, our goal is. And so what's a little bit different about some of the factoring that we're seeing now here is that we still see like an x squared term and we still see a middle x term and we still see a number. But what we haven't really dealt with is when the number in front of the x squared there is not a 1. And that's what makes this a little bit different and a little bit more guess checky. Okay, but with a little bit of strategy, at least limiting our options down a little bit, right? 
So um, it gets a little trickier when like this number or even that number has lots of factor options. It was a little easier in the previous problem because that seven only had factors of one and seven, whereas like an eight, for example, might be one times eight, but also might be two times four. So it makes it a little um, just, I guess, more work, more having to guess and check through your options to figure out um, the way that it's gonna factor. The good thing about factoring is that there's only one unique way to factor an expression. Um, so that's always good to be able to know. So there is no GCF of 3n squared plus n 25n and 8. So we don't need to really check that. So just in terms of factoring this, if we can factor this just using whole numbers, the good news is that to get 3n squared, you can only do 3n times n, right? There's no other whole numbers that can multiply to equal 3 and then also the n squared. So those will be our choices. Also, everything's all positive here, so that makes that very nifty as well, that you can just do, you know, plus and plus. Um, so then we know that these two numbers are going to have to multiply and directly equal that 8. It's just a matter of, well, what are those numbers going to have to be, right? And we just have to guess and check um, and then FOIL and make sure that it still equals the expression that we uh, want it to equal, right? So your options for numbers that multiply to equal 8 would be a 1 and an 8, as then as well as a, a 2 and a 4. And so it's just totally up to you in terms of what you want to guess and check with first to see, like, ultimately what's going to work. So if you feel like, I don't know, let's try two and four, then try two and four, right? And it makes a difference if you put the two there and the four there versus if you put the four there and the two there, because you will get different results. So I don't know, let's put the two there and the four there and see what we get. So you know, just by default, that that's going to be three n squared. So you don't really need to check that. And then you also know that when you do the last times the last, that's going to give you the eight. So you don't need to check that. So really, you only can just like check does doing that and that combine to the 25n in the middle that I want, right? And it turns out that 3n times 4 is 12 and 2n is um, 2n and 12 plus 2 is 14n. So that doesn't give you the 25. So that doesn't work out. So if you still wanted to use the 2 and the 4, that's great. Then just maybe switch where the 2 and the 4 are because that'll give you a different outcome. And if you do switch where those are, if we get this correct here. There we go. Um, so if we put the 4 there instead and we put the 2 there, now you're going to get plus 6n and then plus 4n, but that's plus 10n. So that ain't going to work. So that basically rules out the 2 and the 4 working, right? So you can at least eliminate that as possibilities. And then try the 1 and the 8. So if we tried the 1 and the 8, you might put the 1 there, put the 8 there, and then you check the outside and you check the inside, and you see that you're going to get 8n and 3n, which add to 11n, so that ain't going to work. So then you put the 8 there and put the 1 there, you'll see that you'll get 24n and 1n, and 24n plus 1n does give you 25n. And so then we know that we're good, right? That the foiling of those factors with each other will equal the expression above it. So finally there, right? We found a factored form of that particular expression. So a little bit more guessing and checking might be involved, right? Sometimes you might get lucky um, and just like guess right. Now, the more that you practice this and work with this, you'll kind of develop the um, agility and efficiency to work with this and usually get it in your earlier attempts. But that just takes more practice and kind of skill and thinking creatively about these. So with the next example right here, you've got 5g squared minus 16g plus 11. So just really kind of being aware of some sign sorts of things that will help you with your guessing and checking ultimately. So with this one, um, there is no GCF. Um, I'll kind of skip past that. So you know there's a 5g squared, and the only thing to get 5g squared is 5g times g, right? So you'll at least kind of know that. Now, because when you multiply these two things, you want it to equal positive 11, then, okay, well, it has to be 11 and 1, right? That's the only thing that times equal 11. But also you have to acknowledge the fact that that middle is a negative, which does then tell you that exactly don't you have to have two subtractions then, right? Because you need two negatives to multiply to equal that positive 11. So that's really helpful for you if you can pick up on what the signs have to be, if it's plus plus or if it's plus minus or minus minus. That's something that you should always be um, looking to figure out every time you're trying to factor here. So we definitely know that like 11 and one have to be the numbers. Um, those are the only whole numbers that multiply to equal 11. And it's just a matter of like guessing and checking. That's not gonna work. And you should know that because that's like negative 55 and then negative 
negative 1, like that's not going to get you close to negative 16, right? Because you actually get negative 56g. So then maybe if we put the 1 there and then the 11 there, that might work out. And it turns out that then if you check the outside, you get negative 5g and then negative 11g, which does indeed combine to that negative 16 there. Um, and so then we're good there. So just really kind of some sign things, plus minus is really to be aware of that's different in that particular example. What's different in this example right here is I want you to be aware mostly kind of with the negative in front. So I've um, talked about and we need to recognize that whenever the leading term, so the term with the highest exponent as negative, you should always factor out a negative first. So there isn't a GCF of these terms, but because of that negative, you should definitely factor out a negative one from all of the terms first. So if I just factor out a negative one, I don't need to write the one, I just write a negative, and we know it means a negative one times, you get then a positive 60 squared minus 11c plus three inside of this parentheses right here, right? That that negative would distribute to. Then from there, this expression inside the parentheses, that quadratic expression, you're gonna wanna try to factor that down into a product of a couple linear factors. So what's also kind of different here now is that then if I do try to factor that down a little bit further, is that in order to get this 6c squared right here, you actually have some options because you could do 1c times 6c, but you could also do 2c times 3c. And you really aren't gonna know like what's gonna work and, until you just guess and check and you run um, through the options. Now the good news is that that's a three. So the only thing that can multiply to be a three is a three times one, so that's, that's really helpful. And then also what's really helpful is that you have a plus at the end there and then a negative in the middle. So for sure, like you know this is gonna have to be minus minus, so that's also really helpful. And then I guess, I don't know, put a three here and then put a one there because you know those are the numbers and then it's just a matter, I guess, of, you know, is it six C times C or is it two C times three uh, C and then like where do those actually go? right so it's just you kind of have to guess and check and find the one that's going to ultimately work out right so i don't know let's try putting how about c there and then that means this has to be 6c right and then foil that out so you know that that's going to give you 6c squared so you're kind of good in that aspect and then you're good right there with the last times the last you really just have to check the inner and the outer, right, to make sure it combines to be a negative 11. So when you check that, based on how we have it here, that's minus 3c, that's minus 6c, that combines to negative 9, we want negative 11, so that's not going to work. So we're going to have to um, maybe change where the c and the 6c were, so maybe if we put the 6c here and the c there and we check that, now we get negative 1c, and negative 18c, which is negative 19c, not negative 11. So that should rule out then that c and 6c is not going to work. So then we might want to explore 2c and 3c. So um, I don't know, maybe put the 2c there. That's going to give you negative 6c. And then um, negative 3c, that's negative 9. So that's not going to work out because that doesn't add to negative 11 so then maybe switch the 2c and the 3c around so put the 3c there and put the 2c there and then you can check and see okay I get negative 9c negative 2c there right that gives you the negative 11c when you combine the like terms in the middle so finally right after some guessing and checking and it's going to take um, several attempts for some of these um, you get a factored expression. Now, I do want to note that these like tealish parentheses here are probably kind of unnecessary. You could really kind of just erase those and really just treat this as like a negative one times this linear term times this linear term. Like that's the factored form of this expression. So I'll, I'll highlight that stuff right there and that gives you the factored form of that particular um, expression there. So with the rest of the examples on this page right here, uh, I'm not going to spend the time going through all of this because obviously this takes a lot of time, but just be aware of um, 
really sign sorts of things and then also what your possibilities are kind of limit yourself to those possibilities and then you just have to work your way through the guessing and checking so um, for example things to kind of think about as you're starting this one is like it's really easy to know that it has to be just 3m times m so that's good news um, then you also have to think about the fact that okay if that ends with a negative right then you're going to have to multiply two things, one of which that's positive and one of which that's negative. Now, however, it's going to make a difference, a huge difference, if you put a plus there and a negative there, because it might not be right. You might actually have a negative with the 3m and then a positive with the m. Okay, so then you're going to have to start exploring possibilities with where the pluses and the minuses are ultimately going to go. Okay, and then there's also going to be some options with that being a 4 because you could do a 4 times 1 and you could do a 2 times a 2. So you have to explore possibilities there and then the foiling has to amount to having a negative 4m in, in the middle there as well. So um, quite a bit of guessing and checking. So like, I don't know, if you want to try doing like a plus and then a minus, then you know, try that first, I guess, and then pick your numbers that you want to try and then guess and check. So if you wanted to try two and two first, then you could certainly try that. And then you're going to have to foil that out and see what you get. You know that that's going to be 3m squared and you know that that's going to be the negative four. So really what matters to check is does I do I combine to the negative 4m? So there you get the negative 6m. There you get a plus 2m. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Hey, so on that attempt, actually, we got it kind of on the first try, but there was some strategy, though, involved with that, though, right? Um, and so the more you work with this and the, the more, you know, strategy you come into this, the quicker you'll get it as you're guessing and checking, or at least maybe on your fourth attempt or whatever, you might um, be able to get it factored completely. So the rest of these kind of a similar sort of approach and attack know that you're going to have lots of options sometimes with some of these. So like with this one right here, you don't know if it's going to be 4a times a or if it's supposed to be 2a times um, 2a to give you the 4a squared. And then with these two numbers, to get a 10, like it could be a 1 times a 10 or it could be a 2 times a 5. Okay, well, this one's a little bit more definitive because you know it has to be minus minus to get the positive 10 at the end there and the negative. So that's helpful, but you're just gonna have to go through the numbers, right? Um, and then with this example right here, um, of course, you're going to have to factor out a negative first and then work your way from there. So I'll uh, share out what these actually factor out to if you want to try them on your own a little bit. But I think with the explanation you've heard so far, I think you get the general idea and gist of uh, what needs to be done with these here.